Can we start off with the huge question that I have, which is why are women feeling so unconfident? Oh, I think it stems from, at least I can speak for myself, mm -hmm. from childhood, from what I was taught, what mm. I was, you know, t taught to believe. So when you're, you know, eight years old and you get a man pat you on the head and says, little girl should be seen and not heard, yep. um, makes you think, oh, so I have to be silent. And um, when you're told that you're going to be a mother and a stay at home wife, and that's going to be your destiny. And what if you don't want that? You're like, oh, was that, what's wrong with me? And so it's the belief system, I think, that we have. And then our actions then dictate that. So as you get mm. into adulthood, now you haven't taken those chances because you're supposed to be seen and not heard. You haven't been bold because people have shunned you or told you to be quiet. And so then you act in accordance because you want to fit in. And in fitting in, in the temporary moment, you feel good. You feel good about mm. fitting in to the crowd or the Very true. everyone around you. And so stepping out of that means you have to be bold. And so no one wants to be left out. No one wants to be put aside or ostracized. Right. And so you start to be molded into maybe a person that you wish you actually could break out of that shell, but you don't know how. And so I think that that's really where it stems from. So when I hear that, you know where my brain goes? Is like, okay, well then if we're gonna change confidence for women, we need to start with the girls. Mm -hmm. We need to start with the younger and we need to start with even how adults speak to younger yes. children and yeah. girls specifically. So, because to what you just said, I bet so many women are like, yep, that was me. Now, I grew up in the 70s where there was so many politically incorrect things going on <laughs> here in LA <laughs> in the 70s. I mean, it was, it's, it was girls do this, boys do this you know girls can't do this I was raised by a mom who was grew up in the 50s which was a very kind of Puritan time of life so those of us that are 50 and beyond we're coming from that childhood so if we look at why so many women are feeling unconfident and somebody listening to this hears what you just said and said yep that was me that was my childhood but now I'm 50 now I'm 60 and I have to figure out how to unwind that mm -hmm. how do we help that that woman how do we when we realize that we the messaging we've been given fucked our brain up mm -hmm. in our self-image how do we begin to unwind it I think it starts with what is it that you want confidence in? Because mm. confidence isn't an end goal, right? It's like, how much do you talk mm. about health? It's like, well, what if you're really hangry? It's like, you know, you're gonna mm. act out of alignment with who you wanna be, but you still mm. act out of alignment. So when it comes to confidence, instead of worrying about, I want to be confident, what does that even mean? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna focus on? What's that thing? What is that North Star that you're trying to get to? Because confidence actually ends up being the byproduct of taking action. Oh. So if you say, for instance, I want, I was just telling you this before, I went to a doctor they told me that I had PCOS and then she looks at my child and she's like oh but you don't want kids oh you're fine then it's now crazy. once upon a time I would have just stayed silent mm. I would have taken that doctor's mm. advice as fact and I wouldn't have said anything but what I realized was what I wanted confidence is to take my health seriously mm. I wanted to own my own outcome of where I was going with my health. Yep. And so once I realized in order to do that, I had to stand up for myself. I had to speak up when something didn't sound good. Now I, I know where I'm trying to get to. And in over time, when I do these stepping stones, the next time the doctor says something doesn't quite align or dismisses you, Lisa, or the doctor, you know, isn't taking you seriously, what are you gonna say? What are you gonna say the next time? And once you learn that, once you practice it, over time, you become competent. Mm -hmm. Once you become competent, the confidence then comes. But what I was saying about the, the hangry thing is sometimes you don't feel confident. And so even when you practice it, even when you have all the skill sets and the tools, there are gonna be moments that you don't feel it and it's okay. Mm -hmm because that will ebb and flow. Mm -hmm. They will depend on your hormones. It will depend right. on how you show up and what your goal is and how you're trying to get there. And so I think the first thing is identify what you're trying to get confidence in. Mm. And you know what I just heard in that is confidence is congruent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with yourself. Yes. So it, I, did you end up speaking up to that doctor? Yes, in that I said, I'm sorry, but just because I won't, don't want children doesn't mean that my body doesn't matter. Yep. And so I just got up and I walked out and I then tried to find another doctor. Like I just yeah. had to then find that next step because if I didn't have the confidence to do that, right. I wouldn't have then, I would have been like, oh, okay, I guess my body doesn't matter then. Right. So again, that was a gem and I want to make sure nobody loses what you just said. Every single time we are in a situation that we feel like we are either being gaslit or marginalized mm -hmm. or not treated right and we don't stand up for ourselves in that moment, we are weakening our confidence in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that what I just heard? Absolutely. And so 
then it becomes well, what steps are you going to take on that path to the confidence? Okay, so the next time the doctor goes to gaslight me, what am I going to say? Because when you don't feel confident, mm. it's easy to say, oh, just stand up for yourself. But when you're in it, Yep. You don't know how to stand up for yourself. Yes. So I am such a like an advocate for like having scripts in certain situations because my emotions can take over. Mm. Right? I could feel badly about mm. myself and then I could feel the shame. I could feel, well, maybe the doctor does know more than me. Yep. It's like, no, in those moments when I'm about to go to a doctor, if they gaslight me, what am I going to say? And then that teaches you, okay, what am I going to say the next time? What am I going to do? And so I'm very action oriented. Um, but I write, I try to write my action steps before I get into the situation. Because again, when you don't feel confident just telling someone to be confident in speaking up mm -hmm. won't help yeah and you know what i'm thinking in that is especially with the holidays coming up and so many people get thrown into their family mm. units and there's all that kind of chaos is if you can what i'm hearing you say is know the situation you're going into if you know where you're going to be gaslit or marginalized have a plan before you get in there mm -hmm so that you can finally stand up for yourself. And when you do, I'm also wondering, when you come out of that, there needs to be an honoring of yourself mm -hmm. as well, of like, hey, I finally stood up to that situation. I finally stood up to that family member or that doctor or that mm -hmm. person. And then realizing that that standing up for yourself added to your confidence. A thousand percent. And so what I would do in that family situation, I would just replay past experiences. So I was like, okay, I'm going to dinner. I know my dad's gonna say X, Y, and Z. I know my mom or whoever. And you just write it as a script and you're like what happened the last time that you felt like you had to be shut down that someone stepped on you that you were dismissed okay mm -hmm. write that script out mm -hmm. now right next to it what you would say and do differently because there's going to be so many nuances to the people that you talk to and how they respond and then you have to be okay then we're saying what you think they're gonna say. Right. Because often, right, you've got, you play something out in your head and you're like, all right, I'm gonna stand up for myself. And then someone throws you a curveball and you're like, oh God, I don't know what to say yeah. or do. So I will have an action plan. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, if my mom says this, I'm gonna say this to her. If she then repeats it, I'm gonna repeat this. And if she doesn't do that, I'm going to get up and, you know, very kindly dismiss myself from the table. Like, mm -hmm. actually, get write out, it out. Of the energy. Yeah. Yeah. And if that even means, and I, I don't, advocate for lying, Mindy. Yes, I don't. Right. But the second it comes to my health and mm. my mindset, I actually would if I had to. Yeah. So the situation, let's say people are being cruel to you at dinner or they're picking like, oh, oh, look at you being all healthy over there, right? And it just, it upsets you. However you respond. What am I going to do in that situation? Lisa, if you don't have words, to defend yourself and I, maybe I don't want to create um, animosity at Christmas. Yeah. Okay, so if, if it starts to escalate, Lisa, what are you going to do? Yeah. I may say, my plan is, I'm going to say, oh my God, I've got a really upset stomach. Mm. I'm so sorry, I have to excuse myself. Mm. Or I just have to repeat. Whatever that excuse is that has to get you out of that room, mm. if that's what you have to do to preserve your mindset, to preserve that confidence that you're trying to build. That brings up a really interesting thought, which is the environment that we put ourselves in is going to dictate our confidence mm -hmm. and if we put ourselves in toxic environments and whether it is the family Christmas dinner or a work environment and we can continue to go in there and not stand up for ourselves then we continue to weaken our own confidence so the environment is massively important is what I heard in that. yeah the environment and then who you are around uh, mm. uh, who's around you I should say because okay. if you're let's say with you know like if it was me and you right and we were out in place like both of me and you think very similarly about food about health about how mm -hmm. like you know lifestyle mindset yep. so now imagine it's me and you and then there's one other person there that doesn't have a positive mindset i think me and you would be able to stand super freaking strong in our abilities yeah, yeah. i know i would be able yeah. to we'd, but we'd walk away we would yeah exactly and <laughs> we'd we, be like see ya yeah, we're out <laughs> exactly yeah. but now imagine i'm the only person with a growth mindset that wants to do better mm. and take my health seriously and build my confidence and now i go to see my family mm. because your family especially brings you back to your childhood they oh. still see you so, oh so i'm the much. youngest child so yeah. you can imagine they're like oh little lisa what does she know oh so much and so in that environment i may have to dress differently and what i mean is what are the clothes that i can wear to give me the confidence to walk mm. into that room with my family i may need to use different vocabulary because in t if i say to my dad dad i wish you had a growth mindset because then you would understand he'd be like what the hell's a growth mindset so i'd have to adopt a different vocabulary to use to them versus somebody else mm. that i'm working with that maybe has a growth mindset or knows what I do for a living yeah. so everything is um, context who are you around where are you um, how do you respond typically in those environments to not beat yourself up over it right because I definitely with my family I regress into being the younger child oh, oh yeah me
me too. How many kids in your family? Um, I've got two older siblings, okay. and then my dad remarried and had two other children, but I'm still seen as like the little, the youngest, little Lisa. Yeah. 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 It's so interesting. I'm So I'm the youngest too. Mm. And it is when we all get together, it's like everybody goes back into their roles. Mm. And it's so, it, everybody in the family, I'm like, okay, wait, my parents are in their 80s. My sister's two years older than me. It's like, what? How are we back mm -hmm. in this situation? So it really, that is really a thing. It's quite interesting how our, everybody plays the part. It's like yeah. a movie you're walking yeah. back into. Mm -hmm.